Uh, this is about the half year results, but I think it's also about uh, showing and demonstrating that our strategy is beginning to uh, work and these results are really a transformational, transitional uh, aspect of our business for the half year. So if we go to slide 21 and we'll start uh, where you should start with any business, it's the markets that you're operating within. So on this slide, uh, you can see bottom left where Bislink uh, started its journey, so sort of almost three years ago now, which was in the core hardware broadcast business, um, which has gross margins of around about 40%. If we go top right of this slide, that's uh, software, and that is where Applebee's Systems fits in terms of our software strategy. Uh, gross margins in software, around 80%, and obviously extremely good cash generation. The other aspect of this slide is to look at the growth rates uh, that are available to us uh, within the business. Obviously the core hardware broadcast business is where we've come from. It's the roots of our business and we dominate that in terms of market leadership in what's called video contribution. The um, surveillance business is effectively using similar technology but actually using that technology to address a market which is almost equivalent in terms of size to our core hardware business. And Broadcast Cellular didn't exist a couple of years ago, and that now is a 50 million pound business, so growing very quickly. And that's where a lot of our investment has gone in terms of hardware. So I think that sort of uh, hopefully sets the scene in terms of the business. And now if we flick pretty much to the beginning of the uh, presentation and talk, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the results themselves and to give you an overview. So we're actually on slide three, which is a, an overview of the business. So we've had five uh, consecutive half years of uh, profit. Uh, our adjusted operating profit was up 3.4%. Um, we had very good order intake. Uh, particularly in the second quarter of the year, and our book to bill ratio is around 1.23, which stands us in good stead for the second half in terms of our order book. And we saw very solid cash generation from the business at around 5.5 million pounds. And if we look at our net debt position now, it's pretty much close to zero. It's 0.3 of a million 300,000 pounds. So um, that said, uh, our software business, probably software, contributed greatly to these half year results and made an absolutely stunning start to, uh, to the relationship with us. Uh, I think being part of this link is helping the business that will be systems in terms of scale. It's giving you access to the Bislink distribution around the world. Um, and what we announced yesterday was a strategic relationship with Harmonic. Harmonic are a $400 million turnover business, about $600 million market cap. And Harmonic uh, have effectively signed up for a version of uh, Marina, which is the software within Pebble Beach Systems. And they will use uh, that product under a harmonic label to sell into their customers and be part of their solutions. And as part of the uh, deal, they've actually placed advance orders for the software uh, of two million pounds, and they will pay for that software over the next quarter. As well as that, and separately, uh, Harmonic have decided to take uh, a stake in Bislink, uh, which is around three and a half percent, and they have uh, paid two million pounds for shares at 50p a share. Uh, the reason that they've done that is that it's important to them that they can say to their sales organisation and to their customers alike that this is this is a very long-term relationship with this thing, um, where they see great synergies and great opportunities to sell our, our software as part of their solution. Um, as well as, uh, as well as that, we have an £8 million government contract, which in the first half 
uh, we actually took about 30% revenue. The remainder will be taken in the uh, in the second half. So I think uh, in terms of our overall results for the half year, I think satisfactory. Uh, I think as we go into the second half, uh, we will get the benefit of a strong board book, uh, better margins and mix as far as the business is concerned. And we remain confident of achieving the uh, city core counts. So I think at this stage, I'm going to um, hand over to Ian, who will go through a little bit more detail in terms of numbers. And then I'll come back and touch upon the strategy in a little bit more detail. Ian, over to you. OK, thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. If you could move to slide seven, which is the results overview, I'll just take you through the numbers for the first half. So as John said, a satisfactory performance with mixed uh, delivery from different parts of our group. In terms of order intake, uh, we received a £33 million worth of orders in the first half of this year. Revenue slightly down as reported on a cost of currency basis. Revenue would have been brought in line with the first half of this year. But there is a change in the mix of that revenue, which I'm going to go through on the next slide. Adjusted operating profit as reported down to £1.7 million. But again, as John alluded to on a constant currency basis, just operating profit would actually have been up for the first half of this year. Adjusted earnings per share of 1.2 pounds, uh, which I'm going to cover a little later on as well. And as John has also mentioned, very strong cash generation in the first half of this year. And we finished actually with net debt of only 300,000 at the end of the period. So just to pick up on those items in a little bit more detail, we're going to start looking at the revenue, which is on slide eight. And what we've done here is presented a revenue bridge between the first half last year and the first half this year. So as we've mentioned, um, we have slightly disappointing performance, particularly in Q1 this year, uh, in, in terms of order intake in the broadcast arena. But what we saw was a strengthening of order intake through Q2. And we finished the half with a good solid order book of over 13 million at the end of H1, which compares with 5.6 million at the end of December last year. But in the mix of that revenue, um, broadcast and our surveillance was below what we'd hoped for in the first half, but as we've mentioned, with some of the surveillance contracts, particularly in the US, we saw that business move into H2 this year. It is partially in the nature of those contracts and the timing of them can move, and that's what we've seen this year. And as John's also mentioned, in terms of our surveillance revenue, we expect a strong performance from the UK government contract, and the majority of that contract will be delivered in H2 of this year. In terms of the revenue performance from the acquisitions, we're very satisfied with the contribution from Amplify Technology in the first half. And in terms of Pebble Beach Systems, as we've stated, that came in ahead of management expectations. Uh, and just to frame that, um, Pebble Beach Systems, as we've mentioned in the past, was running at around six million per annum prior to acquisition. And we've just gone through just over a quarter's worth of ownership where they've achieved over three million pounds. So we're very pleased with that result. It's been supported by good order intake in the quarter for Pebble Beach Systems as well. Uh, and obviously that bodes well for that company going forward. In terms of the mix between broadcast and surveillance business, we've got a long-term strategic target to increase the surveillance elements of our business for a number of reasons, largely because surveillance has only improved gross margin for us. Um, we also have more headroom in terms of the available surveillance market available to us, and also because surveillance revenue often comes with recurring revenue in the form of future orders once you find yourself embedded in on, on a particular framework agreement. Moving on to the operating profit bridge, which is on slide nine. What we've done here is show the movement in operating profit in comparison with the previous period. And again, reflecting what we just discussed, we saw sales volume in terms of the traditional business, the core business, um, down on previous periods and down on our expectations but for the reasons we've just discussed we expect recovery in the second half. We also saw a slight drop in the margin on the core business in the first half but that was due to mix rather than price impressions. We have a range of margins on our core hardware products uh, and last year we had a slightly higher product mix, higher margin product mix in the first half but we, we're not under any long-term pricing pressure so we expect margin recovery on that business. And perhaps more importantly in terms of material margin, with the mix of revenue now moving towards software, as John mentioned, the software business comes with a material margin closer to 80%, whereas our core hardware business is a material margin closer to 40 to 50% historically. Cost control has been important both last year and this year, and we've seen improved benefit in H1 from cost savings, with further benefits coming through in, in H2. 
Uh, we've managed to restructure the group in a way that we believe uh, still gives us a very strong engineering base and actually improved sales and channels to market, not least because of the partnerships we've got with companies like TBU and Harmonic. Acquisitions have contributed strongly to profits in H1, and with Pebble Beach Systems in particular giving us a very pleasing result. As John mentioned, um, foreign exchange wasn't helpful in the first half, but we're not hiding behind that. It's mainly to do with translation on consolidation. Uh, we actually translated our balance sheet at around 170 on the 30th of June, which wasn't helpful. Uh, and I'll leave you to form your own view as to where we might finish up on the 31st of December, but we may well see some of that playing back into the second half. I was going to move on to slide 10 now, which discusses our investment in new technologies. We've discussed this in the past, um, developing new products and ensuring we maintain product leadership is important to this link. And in 2013 and through into 14, we really saw two trends in terms of our investments in new technologies. One of the trends was a refresh of the entire product range, uh, basically starting this time last year with new products being launched into the IPC show in Amsterdam in 2013. And that's across our complete product range, including wireless camera backs, satellite communication devices, uh, and other infrastructure devices. The second big trend in terms of investment in new technology is our investment in cellular and IP technology. We've been saying for a while we found this is important to know where the industry was going. The cellular and IP technology investment has enabled us to partner with organizations like TVU, and more importantly, to offer the marketplace hybrid solutions. Uh, and the first example of that is a new stream device, which we saw launched in H1 for this year. We've got further selling IP products to be launched into H2 of this year, and we still believe that's a strong environment and high growth marketplace for the group going forward. If I can move on to slide 11, which is the cash flow slide. As you can see on this slide, this slide picks up a number of the points I've made before. Very strong cash generation in H1 this year, with over 5 million of cash generated from operations. We have invested that cash. We invested a net 7 million in acquiring Pebble Beach Systems. You may recall the gross consideration for that business was 14.9 million. It came with over 6 million pounds of the cash on the balance sheet. Uh, we issued 2 million pounds worth of shares to the management, to the vendors, who are still very much part of that business and with us growing that business going forward which left us with a net cash outlay of around seven million for that business. Um, with the harmonic deal Sean's going to cover in more detail in his section, we're now seeing a cash inflow uh, in relation to that business of over four million pounds in Q3. And as I mentioned earlier, we saw two million investment in capitalized development costs, which we think is very affordable given the improving cash generation of our group going forward. And clearly structurally, uh, the inclusion of a software business within our group means we are naturally more cash generative because the software business itself is more cash generative as a business. So if we can move on to the summary slide on slide 12. Uh, I'm just going to touch on the use of earnings per share number in a little bit more detail as I mentioned. Um, clearly the, the actual value of the just earnings per share in the first half is a consequence of uh, the just operating profit in the first half. Um, but there's two points that are probably worth mentioning and worth noting for those people who want to look at the EPS valuation. One is that the number of shares in issue has increased during the course of the year. I mentioned earlier that we issued some shares to the vendors of Pebble Beach Systems. Uh, and also with the placing that we've issued to Harmonic uh, this week, we'll actually see the number of shares in issue go up to around 123 million by the end of the year. But the weighted average for the year in terms of calculating EPS will be less than that. The other point I want to mention in terms of adjusted earnings per share is that we are currently on a very low effective tax rate. That's because we've had tax losses brought forward. Uh, we've utilized those tax losses. Uh, and so for us, it's not just a question of a reported EPS number. It means actually we've retained our cash and actually can use that cash for investments in other areas. What we've also got on the right-hand side is an infographic in terms of the recent trading performance of business, which again, people have followed this for all performance with, uh, will be familiar with. So going back to 2010, on around 40 million of turnover, the group lost 8 million pounds. And it was at that point that we set the long-term targets to turn that around uh, and move the group into a significantly more profitable position. We've now had five halves of solid profit, uh, with the half that's just finishing delivering 1.7 million. But clearly in order to meet market expectations, what we're now anticipating is an improved performance in H2. 
Uh, and on that note, I'm going to hand across to John, who's going to talk through some of those factors. Okay, thanks, Ian. So I think if we turn to slide 14, uh, just to remind everybody, give them an overview of the business. Our strap line, if you see our annual report, says from scene to screen. Uh, we like to say from first of the scene to second screen. So first of the scene, if you're a journalist getting into the field and capturing your, your uh, content on video using a, a variety of uh, available wireless technologies, whether that's cellular, whether that's Wi-Fi, Wi-Max, or more traditional uh, microwave and satellite communications. So the uniqueness uh, around wisdom is one, it's market leadership and dominance in this market over many, many years. But the transition that we've made in terms of using uh, more, um, using newer technologies that have now become available, and it's that hybrid capability uh, working with the best partners that are available to us, such as TVU in the whole cellular space, uh, really does give us a unique positioning in the marketplace. If you add to that the fact that we are capturing video, which we call video contribution, to give you some facts and figures around that, if you take all of the outside broadcast events around the world, both in terms of sports and news gathering, visiting technology is deployed in two thirds of those around the world. So we really have got a very strong position. We've taken that first to the scene concept into the surveillance marketplace. So we're deploying many of the technologies that we're well known for in broadcast and we're actually now applying those in the surveillance market, which is growing rapidly and actually giving us better margins. If we, um, if we look at some of the influences of the second half that will actually help to improve our uh, results in the second half of this year, we have a number of products that Ian's identified that really will start to sell in the second half. Um, to name some of those, New Street, is one which effectively captures all of the different wireless technologies that we've referred to and ensures that those are played out. Um, the fact that we've got uh, WGS certification, which is US approvals for our MSAT product, will actually drive and give us an effective doubling of our market uh, capability because we can now sell that product into the US markets and US supported uh, countries, uh, including NATO, uh, Australia, New Zealand, and many, many more. So new products into expanded markets in the second half of the year. Um, Amplified technology we should touch upon uh, had a very sort of strong incentive in terms of earnouts. Uh, they contributed to the profitability in the first half, uh, but they didn't achieve their earnouts, and so therefore we released that uh, earnout back into the balance sheet. So if we move uh, forward in terms of the uh, presentation, let's just um, touch a little bit on uh, pep on harmonic, which uh, uh, Ian referenced. As we said in the earlier introduction, harmonic are are a tremendous partner uh, for Pebble Beach Systems and for the sale of their products in global markets. And we're actually delighted to have Harmonic uh, as a partner, as a strategic partner. And we believe that this is the beginning of a very successful partnership between the two companies. We're not going to talk too much about this at this stage because this is subject to an official launch uh, of this partnership of the, um, and the um, IBC conference, which is in a couple of weeks' time. So we won't steal Harmonic's thunder as far as that is concerned. Just maybe to uh, try and summarize uh, our position with regards to Outlook. Uh, the second half, we believe, will improve in terms of results. We will have six months of Pebble Beach software and the Harmonic uh, relationship which would bolster our software product uh, profits in the second half. We will actually have a lower cost base for our hardware division going into the second half. 
and the large government contract that we referred to, there is still the majority of that uh, contract to take to revenue and to contribute towards the profitability of the business. As Ian was saying, our net debt position is pretty much close to zero, so we have a strong balance sheet and we are capable of making further bolt-on acquisitions. And I think it's fair to say that our track record in terms of making acquisitions has been extremely good. They will be accretive and they're all helping to contribute to the change in mix and the change in earnings quality of this group as we go forward. To maybe demonstrate that, if we look at the half year last year in terms of mix of business compared to this year, last year our broadcast hardware business represented 84% of our revenue. And over the half year this year, it's around about 62%. The uh, surveillance <coughs> business was at 16%, and as Ian was saying, now represents about 25% of, uh, of the hardware uh, revenues in the half. And software, we didn't have a software business this time last year, and in three months of ownership of Pebble Beach, we now have 12% of our revenues coming from software. So if you recall the very first chart that I showed in this uh, presentation, you can see that if we're, if we're careful and uh, mindful of the changing mix and opportunities that we've got uh, ahead of us, uh, we have a great future and also we have the opportunity to further improve the earnings quality of this link. Thanks very much. I think we're now into questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, you'll be surprised we've got quite a few questions on the harmonic deal. Um, the first is, would, do you think that harmonic deal would have happened if you hadn't bought Pebble Beach? No, yeah, I think it's a perfect example of uh, Pebble Beach being part of the bigger group now and uh, really working with them and uh, then having the benefit of our expertise um, with these type of transactions. So we work together as a team, both uh, PBS and this thing. Thank you. And um, do you think that Harmonic could be a potential buyer for the whole of this link at some point in the future? Uh, we never speculate on things like that. So we need to run the business and to grow long-term value for our, for our shareholders, including us. It's nice to see everyone in the same boat there. And um, is there any exclusivity to the Harmonic deal? Uh, no, there's no exclusivity, although the software that we've developed is uh, a very specific version for Harmonic, and it will actually be labelled Harmonic. So from Harmonic's customers' perspective, they'll see this as an integrated part of their solution that their sales force will sell to their customers. Um, Harmonic sales organisation will also have the ability to sell the rest of the uh, PBS range including services, which go beyond what we've done. We've already declared in terms of the, uh, the software licenses that have been uh, pre-purchased by uh, Harmonic. Uh, so to do on that, will, will the whole of the 2 million software order be taken to the P&L in H2, or will any of it be carried over and traded into 2015? It depends on our CFO and our auditors and okay. following the rules of revenue recognition. Yeah, so our first revenue recognition will come into play. The order will be bought in the second half. The cash will be received in the second half. The revenue recognition is still to be determined. Thank you. Um, a couple of uh, questions on sort of age two and, and, and progress for the year. Uh, in the old targets of 80 million revenue and 8 million profit by the end of 2014 now look um, slightly more challenging. Uh, would you think they're still realistic? Well, they were targets in 2011 when we set them, and they remain targets. Um, I would say for us, quality of earnings is important. So the 8 million uh, is more important than the 80 in terms of quality of earnings. But as we said back in 2011, it was a target. It was also conditional upon us making acquisitions. But we've always said all the way through this that we will not be uh, forced or concerned about making a bad acquisition just to meet the target. 
Um, okay, look, last one on harmonics I have at the moment. Um, can you explain what the commercial arrangements are with harmonic uh, going forward in respect to ongoing sales made by them? Uh, I, think, I thought we made that clear, but let's have another go at it. Um, I think firstly, in terms of the relationship with harmonic, we will be working very closely with harmonic to help ensure that we maximize the uh, opportunities that come through this partnership. The uh, specific um, software licenses that have been purchased by Harmonic, as I say, around, uh, are around a very specific package that's been developed for Harmonic to sell uh, through their sales channels. Uh, on top of that, we want to encourage them to look at all opportunities. And so we will work uh, with Harmonic on those opportunities as well. Thank you. <clears throat> and last couple of points really. Um, if anyone's got any further questions, please do submit them now. Otherwise, um, are you um, currently looking for the strategic partnerships and can we expect any more M&A news uh, on strategic sales this year? I think it's always been our policy. We don't talk about uh, acquisitions or partnerships until we've done them. Well, um, unless anyone else has got anything else. Uh, oh, here we are, more just dropping in now. Um, question uh, from John, is, is Pebble Beach seasonal? Um, if I extrapolate results so far, it points to 2.98 million operating profit um, for the, uh, uh, the operating profits for uh, nine and a half months. Is that too high or too low? You shouldn't extrapolate from me what we've uh, declared. This is a software business. In the summer months, uh, the assets of our business go up and down in the lift and they also go on holiday. So when they go on holiday, they're not, they're not making software and they're not uh, uh, servicing those opportunities in the output. So there's a natural uh, reduction in the performance of the business in the summer months here. Um, and we wouldn't expect that to be any different, and so you should not extrapolate what we've given as guidance for the full year. And I'll leave Ian to add anything to that. If you no, I would, I would just say, and also bearing in mind that we're going into business for one quarter, I think we need to establish a track record of uh, seasonality. But absolutely, agree with what John was just saying. Thank you. Um, could you give a few more details of how the hardware division was uh, restructured and what was cut? Yeah, I think what we did was make it more efficient and we joined the whole business up. Uh, you have to realize that uh, Vislink has been made up of a number of discrete uh, organizations and that to some degree brings focus but it also brings inefficiencies. So what we've done is we've joined up, for example, the development so that we've got one development uh, strategy and philosophy which is global. Uh, that uh, coupled with other efficiencies that we took in the business gave us the, uh, the savings that uh, we will now see come through in the second half and beyond. So it was more about uh, operational efficiency and joining the group up than it was about you know, taking you know, large scale costs out of any particular area of the business. It's about efficiency. Lovely. Well, Thank you both for coming along and, and making the time to um, speak with us today.